Welcome to the complete guide on editing video inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. If you're new to editing in this program, then this is going to be the perfect video for you. I'll be walking you through everything you need to know to get started in Premiere Pro, and this is definitely a video I wish I had when I started out editing in this software about 15 plus years ago. It would have saved me so much time if I could have watched a video like this, and in this video, I'll be sharing a lot of practical tips for editing, not just showing you how to edit, but to have a streamlined workflow, and I'll also be sharing tips on how to edit faster so you can improve your editing speed, as well as some really cool effects that you could do inside of Premiere Pro that'll make any beginner look like a pro. I'll also be covering how you you can level up your audio and add music to your videos, how to use text templates, edit vertical videos for social media, color grade, and so much more. And so with that being said, let's jump into this free masterclass on Adobe Premiere Pro for beginners. You gotta just press record. This video is sponsored by Epidemic Sound. If you are looking to get royalty-free music and sound effects for your video edits, then Epidemic Sound is the perfect solution. And if you would like to get 50% off their annual personal plan, just use the code THINK50 at checkout, but check out the link down in the description below if you'd like to sign up. Hey, what's up? It's Omar Tsukoy with Think Media. Now, before we get into how to start a project in Premiere Pro, I do wanna let you know a few things. Number one, that you should save this video. If you're watching this on YouTube, click that save button so that you could reference this video in the future. I know there's a lot to cover in a video like this in one sitting, so if you ever need to reference this video, you'll have it somewhere saved. The second thing is to slow down this video if you feel like I'm going a little fast. You can actually go into that gear icon on the YouTube video, select playback speed, and slow down the video so that you could follow along better. So maybe if you have your Premiere Pro open while I'm going through something, you could slowly follow along with me. And so with that being said, let's jump into how to start a Premiere Pro project as well as the overview of Adobe Premiere Pro. So before you ever open or start a project in Premiere Pro, I believe it's really smart to get yourself set up for success. So every time I start a new project, this is what I do. As you can see, I'm here on my desktop. I create a folder and put everything I need in it. And as far as the format of how I title this folder is I usually start with the year. So we'll do 2022, uh, then the month, and then the date. And then I'll title what the video is gonna be. And I'll put simple YouTube setup. So that's what my video is gonna be. Now, I open up that folder and I then create some more folders. And one is A-roll. A-roll is simply the video that uh, is me talking to the camera. And then I have B-roll, which is all the footage uh, that is demonstrating whatever it is I'm talking about. I like to separate the two because I kind of edit them separately. Now. Notice how I made this on my desktop. If you have space on your computer or laptop to edit video and, and start adding footage, cool. But if you don't, I would encourage you to invest into what is called SSDs or solid state drives. These are external drives that are very fast and are fairly inexpensive for how much you get. Like this one is a two terabyte SSD from Samsung and would come in at around, you know, maybe $300 or so. But I'll post a link to some down in the description below, but I think it's a great investment. I've been using these for years and I, I love them. So now we're ready to drag our footage into our folders. And so before, again, this is way before we open up Premiere, but I use a Sony camera, so we're gonna open up the SD card. I don't know why, but they put it in private, M4 root, and then clip. And then I'm gonna grab all the footage and then drag it into the folder. Now the footage is all dragged and I'm just going to separate them in their respectable folder. So this Three, is the A-roll, as you can see, that's A-roll. And so I'm gonna drag that into the A-roll bin and I have another A-roll clip. Everything else goes into the B-roll folder. And now I am ready to open Premiere and start my project files. So let's open up Adobe Premiere Pro and create our project file. Now that we created that folder, again, everything is gonna go in there. So we're gonna hit new project, and then I'm going to title this YouTube Studio Setup, just keeping everything streamlined. And I'm actually just gonna put it in the same folder. So I'm gonna go to the desktop, and here, here is my folder. So if you have this folder in one of your you know, drives or what have you, put it in there, and then we're gonna hit choose, and then we can hit create. So we're inside of our project in Adobe Premiere Pro that we have created, and if you are looking at this and you don't even know what's going on, great, because I'm gonna give you a little overview of what it is we see here. And if you have Premiere Pro open right now and yours doesn't look like mine, I would encourage you, for the sake of following along, maybe uh, match mine by going to Window, then you're gonna go to Workspaces, and then hit Editing. So this would be the uh, 
workspace that looks like this and then we can manipulate it later which I'll show you in just a moment but let's like run down kind of what it is we see here and we'll even get our project started up as I'm giving you this overview and tour so the first thing we see is kind of obviously our close out or minimize and our you know expand uh, icons that we can you know enter full screen and stuff like that then we see our home button if we click this it takes us back home and if you stay pretty organized you're gonna see all your projects listed out here it's kind of what we saw earlier right but let's just go back into our YouTube studio setup next we're gonna have our edit tab this is where you're gonna live when you when it comes to editing and for the first time ever they have included an import tab as well as an export tab like when I updated updated my Premiere Pro and I saw this for the first time I was low-key confused but they definitely did this to make it a lot easier for editors so let's import our footage why don't we do that let's click on import and then you know where we saved our stuff we put it on the desktop we put it into this folder and then I don't want to I don't want to import my Adobe Premiere Pro auto save folder uh, I just want to import my a roll and b roll and then over here on the right as you can see I don't want it to create a new sequence it's kind of like an automated thing it's going to do with all the files you created or selected so I'm just going to hit no to that hit import now you can see that all my files were imported here and these are just the file listed out if you want to kind of see how the files look this is the icon view and this is this area is what you would call your bin this is where you would put all your assets your b-roll your music your uh, intro stingers or what have you and so you would put all those files here but it doesn't maintain the folders which I think is totally fine if you're gonna have a fairly simple project but for the sake of the video I'm gonna create a b-roll uh, folder so that's just by right clicking and creating a new bin why don't they just call it folders I don't know but I'm gonna select hold down shift and drag that into b-roll just to keep it clean but let's continue on the tour that I promised and it would be best if we actually get started kind of editing so I'm actually gonna click this uh, sort items thing here at the bottom left and I'm gonna uh, have it uh, be listed by name and I do this because I want my files in chronological order if if it's in use order it's kind of random so we want to make sure that it's in chronological order now we're going to add the a roll files onto the timeline and there's a few ways that you can do this and let me show you the few ways number one is you can just click and drag it into the timeline and that's going to create a uh, timeline based on the video file itself this is a very great way to do it because it is a very fail safe way to maintain your your settings now i'm going to hit command z just to start over and another way you can do it is you can right click and select new sequence from clip and it's going to do the same thing that's what it's going to do it's the same thing so uh, we're going to leave it at that so I'm, I'm actually going to just select all three drag them from the uh, first clip down in and so now all my a roll clips are in chronological order inside of a sequence with the correct sequence settings now you can notice that in the timeline it created the sequence based on the video file name which I'm not a fan of because you know over time you can get lost in the sauce so we're gonna change the title of this sequence by clicking the the numbers and letters here and I'm gonna type in YouTube studio setup and if you named the sequence correctly you could see it reflected here so now this is gonna be a better tour of Adobe Premiere Pro as we have things in the right places so let's go back to the to the left side as we that's where we were and we left off and we're going back so we could see in this left box we uh, see a couple things number one we have our effects controls this will house any and all effects that we add on our video clip when you click on audio you will see the same thing but for your audio file you can also see the motion position scale of a video file as you can zoom in a video file I use that a lot uh, command Z you can you can shift a video file from left or right or up or down if you so desire and that would happen here uh, I don't want to get too much in the nitty-gritty of this because you don't need to know the nitty-gritty of it but anytime I add an effect it's gonna show up here and I edit the effect in this place and then if you click over on this next tab I don't really use this but this is kind of your uh, audio mixer I would say you don't have to worry about it then we have metadata something else you don't necessarily have to worry about at, at a beginner level and then we have our source um, video preview monitor so let's say I wanted to preview a clip before I even throw it into a timeline you would double click the clip and then you can you can watch it YouTube, you can do so 
with it. So you don't necessarily need to always drop every file in if you know maybe there's mistakes and you wanna make sure that, you know, maybe this one was a mistake file and you can find that out that like this and then I can delete it uh, from my bin or what have you. But this is a, what I would call your preview monitor and you can do so much in this preview monitor because you can, you can even mark I and O to mark in and out if you want a specific clip and then if, if you click and drag into the timeline you'll see that uh, it'll go right in based off of what you marked in and out. So uh, that's the preview monitor. You could see that it's a part of that. It, it, it'll pop up automatically if you double click a clip. You don't have to always like click it. So, but for the most part, I do keep my effect controls ready at hand over there. Uh, and then moving on to the right side, this is uh, my program monitor. This is everything I see in the timeline. So anything you put in the timeline over here will be reflected in here. And some things that I like to keep on are my safe margins. You can see if I right click it, I can take it off, but I like keeping it on for the sake of keeping, making sure what's, what I want to be centered is centered. And, and I like these borders just to make sure that I put text inside of these borders. So that is your program monitor. And then over off to the right, you can now see we have our essential graphics, which I'll show you later in this video, how you can add kind of a, you know, preset templates uh, that will allow you to have motion titles, which is a cool, easy way to do that and make your uh, edits look very professional. And then we also have Lumetri color, which is when we get into color grading and things like that, or maybe even just tweaking things a little bit. But later on in this video, I will show you that. Another thing about Essential Graphics is this is how you add text to your video file. So you can hit edit, and then right here you would add text. Again, I'll show you that later. We're just doing the tour. Going back to the bottom left, we already talked about how this is our uh, bin for all our project files. You can see that there is tabs here, and I don't really think there any of them are all that serious. You don't need to know much about any of these other than the fact that you know it opens up a tab if you do uh, double click on a folder. So that's nice. It makes it easy, easily accessible if you need to access a specific folder or something. Now, the effects, is pretty key because this is your effects panel. This is where you uh, get any and all effects. This is where you, you know, if you have any presets and things like that or LUTs you can create, it's all found here. And so I personally, because I'm, I like having this open, I actually like moving the effects somewhere else because I wanna be able to see my video files while I'm at getting effects, I guess you could say. If I click and hold on the effects tab, you could see that it allows me to move it and then you can actually move it wherever you want to put it. All these windows and tabs are movable, but I actually like putting it over here on the right side next to the Lumetri color and the essential graphics because it's just a good place. So if I wanted to add something, like I have this preset that's called Audio Juice, it kind of makes all my audio sound good. I'm just gonna click and drag that into my first audio clip and now it's reflected and I could see it over here in my effects controls tab. So that kind of covers the effects side of things. And then essentially the last thing I would say is the timeline. This is your timeline where you have your video laid out and Adobe Premiere Pro works as a kind of a, a layer system. So it's kind of the way to think about you when you're creating. If I want something to go on top of the video, I need to put it on top of the video. You know, so if I have text, it's gonna go on top of the video, not necessarily over the video, but whatever is on top in the timeline is over on the video. I hope that makes sense. And if it doesn't, I'm sorry. But anyway, uh, you could see that it, with the ability to hit the plus and minus on your keyboard, you could zoom in and out. Uh, you have also uh, ways to make these tracks bigger, which some people would prefer that, you know, if you like it that way. And uh, this, this is where the magic happens, as they say in MTV Cribs. I do want you to know about these two icons right here underneath the, the time, the playhead position. Number one is the snap in timeline. So you could see that it says S right next to snap in timeline, because that's how you could turn it on and off if you just hit S. And then the next one is the linked selection. So these two are very important. Number one, snap in timeline essentially means uh, you want the ability to be able to you know, move things in your timeline and have it like magnetically snap into place. And I like this because it doesn't leave you with the mistake to accidentally, you know, if I didn't have this clicked and I wanted to go at the end of this clip, 
not only would I have to eyeball it, but it wouldn't snap into place and I'll probably cut out a little bit of the clip. So having this snapped on, it just snaps right into place, which is really nice, right? And then the second thing is the linked selection. So uh, you can, if, if I have this unclicked and I click my video, it, it doesn't you know, grab the audio with it. However, if I hit the link selection and I click the video and drag, or if I just hit the audio and drag, then you can grab both and move both accordingly. So just, those are the two things I wanted you to know about. And so with that being said, that is the overview of Adobe Premiere Pro. But now it's time to actually edit this video and we're gonna trim this down to its core so it's ready for B-roll and music. When it comes to trimming down your footage, there's a few tools that I want you to know about. Number one is the razor tool. If you see here, as I hover in between the timeline and our bin, the razor tool is essentially what will splice our clip as I you know, click on the video. You could see that it's doing that. Now you can see that it's actually cutting both the video and the audio. If you have the link selection off, it'll only cut the video. So just want you to know that. But this razor tool could be accessed by just hitting the letter C on your keyboard and then you can access the razor tool. Now the next tool is the just your regular tool. It's the selection tool. This is just your arrow, the ability to just, you know, essentially uh, click and drag things as needed. And so if you're gonna make a cut, you, you're gonna wanna hit C, and then if you're gonna wanna move something, you're gonna wanna hit V as the shortcut to get the selection tool, and then you can make any adjustments. But a couple other things I want you to know about term-wise is what is called a ripple delete. This is where, you know, if you made uh, a few different cuts in your clip, and you wanted to like delete this, you would click here, either right click, hit ripple delete, and it'll you know, go to the front, or you could just click the empty space, hit the delete button, and then it'll uh, close out that way. But I have found a very fast way when using keyboard shortcuts to actually do this process in the fastest way possible. So if you could with me, let's head to the keyboard shortcuts. If we're gonna click on Premiere Pro right here, I'm gonna select keyboard shortcuts. And I want you to take a good look at my keyboard shortcuts, specifically uh, around here and up here. So the first thing I wanna make sure that you add on your keyboard shortcut is ripple delete. Type in the word ripple in the search bar and drag that to the letter Z. We're gonna, this is all gonna make sense in just a moment. The next thing you're gonna search is add edit to all tracks. So this shortcut, I like to drag onto X as well as W. Cool, Are you following? So we're gonna drag this on X and we're gonna drag this on W. And then the last thing is ripple trim. So ripple trim to the next playhead and we're gonna click and drag that and put it to Q, the letter Q. So once you make these keyboard shortcuts, uh, you can then X out and it'll save forever. Just remember this, but now when I, now instead of hitting the letter C and then having to like cut, I can just hit the letter X and this playhead, as you can see this, this blue playhead right here, if I hit the letter X, it's gonna make the cut for me where the playhead is, which is super great because now if you're shooting video, like what I'm doing right here, uh, shooting A-roll, I'm just gonna find the best take. And this is kind of why I edit backwards when I'm editing down my A-rolls because my last take is the best take. But let's just, for example, let's do a, a quick example. So I'm gonna go to the end of this clip and I'm just gonna cut off the end of it because we don't need the excess. One piece. So where the playhead is, I'm, and I'm just using spacebar to start and stop uh, playing the video. I'm gonna hit the letter X and then I'm just gonna click this and hit the delete button. So now I know this is the end of the video. So now I'm gonna find a moment where I know I kind of mess up, right here. You may have, with any questions you may have, or if you wanna... With any questions you may have. So I'm just gonna hit the X right here, make that cut. And now I'm just gonna kind of find the moment where I say this for the very first time, and there's probably gonna be a lot of mistakes in between. So. This is why I don't like editing a roll chronologically, especially if you were there while you're filming. Any questions you may have, comments below what you think, as well as any questions you may have. So, as well as any questions you may have. Think as well as any questions you may have. And so remember, we made that shortcut on the letter Q, which is to ripple trim from the last cut. So we're gonna, I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna zoom out so you can see this. I'm gonna hit the letter Q and it just deleted all the mistakes I had and I didn't have to watch it through because I know the script, right? So let's watch this back. Questions you may have, with any questions you may have. 
So I'm gonna cut out this point. Let's, so I'm gonna hit the letter X right here. And then I'm going to select it. And remember that um, shortcut we put on the letter Z. So with this clip being here that I now want gone, I don't have to hit the, because I, if I hit delete, it's gonna leave a space. But if I hit the letter Z, which is ripple trim, it's just gonna cut the clip back. So here we go. Any questions you may have, or if you wanna see an updated office. Super smooth transition, and I, you know, that just took just a few minutes, you know? So uh, one cool thing that I like doing, by the way, is anytime I make a jump cut and I don't have footage to cover it, I just kinda zoom in. So I'm gonna click on the last clip that has the cut, go to scale, which is essentially the ability to zoom in and out. And I'm just gonna add like, I don't know, let's go 108. And so there's a little bit of a zoom. I'm gonna bring myself down a little bit. So it'll be a little bit more smooth when that cut happens. Questions you may have, or if you wanna see an updated office tour. So it's like I didn't even mess up. So this is probably one of the most important parts of editing because you are trimming down your video to its core essential. And because of the power of video, I'm going to apply this process and trim down my A-roll down to its main essential, and then we'll go from there. So now all we have is the A-roll trimmed out with all the mistakes. As you can see, all the various different cuts that I have. Uh, the video went from being 28 minutes of A-roll to about eight minutes and 19 seconds uh, total of the video, which is great. So here's a few things that we're gonna do. Number one, uh, we're gonna tweak the video by color correcting, or I mean, some people will call it color grading. They're kind of two different things, but in this case, we're just gonna make it look a little bit better. And then we're also gonna tweak the audio to sound a lot better. And these are things that you could apply to pretty much any kind of uh, video you are editing. So the first thing we're gonna do is tweak the colors. And so you, one might think this looks totally fine, and I agree, it, it does. So we're gonna click on this clip, and remember here how we have on the left side our effects controls? If you look inside, you'll see the actual file name right here. It says source and then the video file. If I click on that, that is now going to allow me to edit the actual file itself and not just the clip in my timeline. So I'm gonna make some adjustments. Number one, I think the shot's a little bit too warm. So we're gonna go into the temperature and do maybe just like a negative eight, uh, kind of like that. And then we're gonna go to the highlights because I feel like the highlights are a little bit bright. I'm gonna bring that down to right about maybe like 15, 16 or so, great. And then I would like to crush the blacks a bit. I like when the blacks a little bit look a little bit more stronger. So we're gonna crush the blacks just a tad bit. Uh, maybe like 38 is cool. So, you know, if you wanna toggle on and off these like quick little changes, you can just go like that. And I do, I do like the more muted blue kind of vibe. And then I'm just gonna add some sharpening a little bit just to give it a little bit more juice. And that's honestly my basic color correction flow. But because this was selected, now you could see how like, Every time you see this clip in the timeline, it has that grade on it. So now we're gonna make some audio tweaks to our voice that'll make it sound super good and professional. So we're gonna first click on our audio waveform down here. You can see that it then activates the effects controls. And now I want you to add these three effects. Remember we added the effect panel over here. If you didn't, it's gonna be down here, but just follow along. We're gonna add these three effects and then we're gonna tweak them right after. So first we're gonna add a graphic equalizer and the one that has 30 bands. So we're gonna drag that into the effects control panel. Then we're gonna type in parametric equalizer, parametric equalizer, as you can see right there. I'm gonna click and drag that into my effect controls. And then we're gonna add a hard limiter. So this is called hard limiter. And then I'm gonna add it right over here. So. As you can see, we have three audio effects inside of our one, and you can see that it, it affected the, the color. You can see that there's effects on this audio file because of the purple FX, whereas the grayed out one, it means that there's nothing done to it. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to edit our hard limiter. We're gonna hit edit, and then we're gonna change it from the preset down to limit to negative six decibels. This is just gonna make your audio leveled uh, and not allow it to peak or come down if if it's if there's parts where it's low. So that's the first thing we're gonna do. The second thing we're gonna do is go to parametric equalizer, hit edit, and then we're going to hit vocal enhancer on the drop down menu. This is probably the more the one that you have to pay attention to the most. You're gonna hit edit on graphic equalizer, 
And so when you first pull this up, it's gonna be zeros across the board. I want you to just take a screenshot of this and low key copy this exactly. Put negative 24, negative 24, negative 15, negative 12, negative six, and then copy it on the other side. And this is just gonna remove a lot of that like unnecessary high noise. And this will work for most, you know, voice, most talking heads. If you're using a lab or if you're using a boom mic like I am doing right now. So those are the really the only three things that I add to my uh, audio just to make it sound a little bit more better. And you only have to do this once. So if you hold down command or maybe shift if you have a Windows, I'm gonna hold down command, select on the first uh, effect, select the second effect, the parametric equalizer, then select the hard limiter effect. You then can hit the right click and save a preset. So you now, now when you add all three effects, you can just add whatever preset you want. And I call it audio juice. That's what I call it. So like you can add, call it audio juice, uh, maybe think so you can remember us, you know what I'm saying? Um, and just hit okay. So in the future, legit, you can just drag it onto the clip itself. So let's just say, I'm gonna select all the audio clips uh, for my voice in this. I'm gonna type in audio juice think and then I'm just gonna click it while it's all highlighted. Look, it's going to actually apply it to every single audio clip and boom. For just simple videos. For I have great audio all throughout my video. And so those are just some slight tweaks I make to the video and to the audio to get me ready to add music or B-roll, which is what we're gonna do next. Adding B-roll to your video is very simple and smart to do. And the reason is, is because it keeps your video interesting. It re-engages the audience every time your clip changes. So if you were just talking on video like this the entire time and nothing was happening on the screen, people would get bored and leave your videos. And so we wanna add B-roll to our edits when possible. And we created a B-roll folder. So I'm gonna take the moment to actually juice up the intro of this YouTube video that I created. So we're gonna go into that B-roll folder that we created a little bit ago. And as you can see, I have some of my B-roll shots. I also downloaded some other YouTube videos on our channel to add into the uh, video later on. But here are uh, essentially two clips that I wanna add in my intro. And so let's just play the intro for a second. If you like what you see right now and what you hear right now, then great, because in this video, I'm gonna be breaking down my super simple but crispy YouTube studio setup so that you can crush your YouTube talking head videos this year. Let's go. So when I say in this video, I wanna start kind of showing you what you're gonna get in this video. So we're gonna double click on this clip because I wanna add this in the intro. And as you can see, we don't need to drag this entire clip on the timeline and then trim it up. We can actually just grab what we need from it based off of our preview monitor. So I'm gonna find the moment where I, I think it, it, you know, it looks good. So I think right here as I scrub, looks pretty good. I have my finger on, my, on the I key and the O key. So I'm gonna mark I for in and then I'm gonna drag this to right about here and then hit the O key. Now, when I hover over this clip icon right here, this is only gonna drag the video. If I drag the audio one, it's gonna drag the audio only. If I drag from the middle, it's actually gonna drag both, as you can see both. But I don't want the audio from this clip because it's a B-roll clip, it's not that important. And so I'm gonna click and drag just the clip itself, just put it right about here. And then I wanna do that with this shot as well that I have, which you can see I already kind of marked it in and out, but just for demonstration, I'm gonna mark I, and I'm gonna drag here, I'm gonna put O, and then I'm gonna click just the video icon and put that there. And so I know all we added was two clips, but let's see how interesting my intro is now that it has these two clips. Right now, and what you hear right now, then great, because in this video, I'm gonna be breaking down my super simple, but crispy YouTube studio. Like already, like you're like, ooh, like I'm getting a little bit. So uh, one thing I do like to do, especially for YouTube videos, is I like to zoom in to my intro shot. So I'm gonna uh, teach you how to do that real quick. We're gonna click on my intro clip, as you can see right here, drag the uh, playhead all the way to the back. Then I'm gonna go into effect controls, and then I'm gonna hit this, uh, this toggle animation key. It's kind of, it's what you call a keyframe. So we're gonna click this toggle animation, and this is essentially where my video starts, right? So I'm gonna move all the way over here, make sure I'm still selected on my clip. Hopefully I don't lose you here. And I'm just gonna change this number to like 110. Hopefully that's enough. And then you'll see when I back it up. If you like what you see right now and what you hear right now, then great because it 
And so all that to say, this is how you add B-roll to your video. You just add it on top of your A-roll. And remember we were talking about the track system. And if at any point you wanna like, let's just say keep a B-roll clip there, but you don't wanna delete it per se, you can actually, these eyeballs that you see over here on the tracks, you can uncheck it. And then if I drag this up there, you actually don't see it anymore because the eyeball is checked. So if you, you know, knowing that feature, you can probably manipulate it as you need to if you wanted to just keep things in your timeline but not it be seen. And so that's how you add B-roll to your timeline. Now I'm pumped for this part. We're gonna add music to our intro, which brings me to the sponsor of this video, which is Epidemic Sound. One danger in creating videos and putting all your hard work into an edit and not having royalty free music is uploading your video to the internet and then it getting taken down and maybe shutting down whatever account you actually uploaded it on. It's a very scary thing that's actually happening nowadays and what you need is, is royalty free music. And unfortunately, it's hard to find royalty free music that's not only easily accessible, but also easy to find. And so what's incredible about Epidemic Sound is they have a huge library of audio tracks that you could browse easily, but also sound legit. A lot of these songs sound like they should be on the radio and that's what I love about it. We can find the song and match the vibe we are going for. A lot of times I like using hip hop trap songs. And what's so cool about downloading a track that you like on Epidemic Sound is that they actually give you the stems of a song. So if there's like an instrument that you like inside of the song that that's all you want, you could download that stem and use that in your video. And if you are looking for sound effects for your videos to take your edits to the next level, there's a huge library and their ability to search for that is so easy. Easy. A lot of the times I'll throw up a price on a YouTube video when I'm doing like a tech gear review and I'll just type in cash register and it gives me the perfect sound that I want when I add that price on screen and it just re-engages the attention of the viewer. And so if you'd like to check out Epidemic Sound yourself and sign up for a 50% off annual personal plan, then use the code THINK50 when you check out and we'll post a link down to it in the description below. Thank you Epidemic Sound for sponsoring this video. So let's find a track that we can use underneath the intro of my video. So we're gonna scroll. Hey, whoa, look at that guy, that fellow over there. Creator picks, don't mind if I do. Uh, we actually have a, I curated a playlist in Epidemic Sound. So if you wanna see kind of like the vibes we like going for, but let me just, let's just find this song that I. A little too chill. It's just, it gets you going though. Kind of a vibe. I know, something about trap that just gets me. Slide my way. Cool. And so we're gonna download Slide My Way, but I just want the instrumental, so I'm just gonna search Slide my way into the thing and then just download the instrumental as you can see right here. So I'm gonna hit download. Download the full mix because you can download all stems but I just want the full mix. Now it is key that whatever assets you download during your video project file, doesn't matter what it is, just make sure you throw it all back into that folder you created to start your project. This is how you stay super streamlined and you won't lose any files. So I'm just gonna drag that music clip inside of my folder that we created in the beginning of this video. Then I'm gonna open up Premiere and then we're going to uh, import this song. So I'm gonna to go to import and then we're gonna to go to the folder we created, slide my way and let's get vibey. Just kidding. So if I double click on the audio clip right now, right here at the bottom left, you can see it, it shows up in the Premiere monitor or the preview monitor and just like B-roll, uh, you can mark in and out here. So I don't need the whole clip onto my my timeline. So I'm just gonna hit the letter I. And then I'll find where I want the, the beat to drop, but I know the beat drops there because of the waveform. So I'm just gonna hit O. And so we're just gonna click and drag the audio only as it is an audio track, put it at the beginning. And you know, when you're adding music and you have somebody talking, you just wanna make sure that the music isn't overpowering somebody. So right now, this will probably overpower my voice. My super simple. Let me unmute. Super simple, but crispy YouTube studio. So you can notice that it's just, you just don't hear what I'm saying. So you can right click and select audio gain, or you can be fast like me and just hit the letter G. And we're gonna tone this down by like, 
I don't know, like minus 25. Because so we're going to set gain to minus 25. I think that's a good rule of thumb. And our, honestly, the rule of thumb I teach is called the grandma rule. If a grandma or an older person can't make out what you're saying with the music playing underneath, I believe it's too loud. That's just, that's me. You can, you know, based off of who you know you're gonna watch, who's gonna watch your videos, but let's see how it sounds now. If you like what you see right now and what you hear right now, then great, because in this video, I'm gonna be breaking down my super simple but crispy YouTube studio setup so that you can crush your YouTube. So really good, I just think uh, we can, I could turn up that, that first part. So I'm just gonna turn up the first part as the intro is going on. So I'll change that to negative 15 and that should be a, a better jump. And then I, where I, you saw it, I sliced it. You can just right click this and hit apply default transitions and it's just gonna fade it nice. If you like what you see right now and what you hear right now, then great, because in this video, I'm gonna be breaking down my super simple but crispy YouTube studio setup so that you can crush your YouTube talking head videos this year. Let's go. You gotta just press record. Hey, what's up? It Boom, we just added music to our project. Shout out to Epidemic Sound for sponsoring this video. Now, I typically like to add music sometimes to the each and every single you know tip of a video. Now it's completely up to your creative freedom on how you use music for your edits. I would just encourage you, at least in the first part of a YouTube video per se, you do wanna grab that viewer's attention and make them feel something, and music totally does that. Now thank you to the power of video editing. I have fast forwarded to the moment where I've added all the B-roll that was needed for this video. Uh, so that's why you could see a lot more things on top of my A-roll. But you know what would really make this video a little more pro would be adding some text, and more importantly, I think some moving text or motion text, and I wanna show you how to do that. So it starts with first finding the place you wanna do that. And so and for this example, I'm gonna just do it when I say the, the distance between myself and the camera here. We're talking about 30 inches away. So I'm gonna just put 30 inches away on the screen. Now, the first way you could do this, and this is like your most basic way you can do it, is you would come over here to Essential Graphics, as you can see. We're gonna hit this Edit tab, and we're gonna hit this new layer, and we're gonna add a text. So, you know, don't worry about how it looks now. We'll, we'll set it up. If I double click this, I'm gonna type in um, 36 inches to the camera. So let's just say this is kind of what you want it to say. So then, I'm going to change this to maybe a font. So if we scroll down, from here, here's the text. Now, if I scroll down to the font, making sure that the font is all selected like so, we can now select a, you know, a font we like. So I don't know, for all intents and purposes, and because I'm from Las Vegas, we're gonna choose Raiders. And you guys just unlike the video because I said Raiders, right? And you're a different football fan. Anyway, just trying to show you a point. So here's the 36 inches to camera. Now you can notice that it's not centered and what's cool about uh, this whole area here is all these buttons allow you to manipulate your text. So if I hit this box, this vertical center, it's gonna bring it uh, vertically center and then if I hit this one in the middle, it's gonna make it horizontally centered. So now we have a text in the middle of the screen which is super nice and what's cool is if you wanted like all caps, you know, you can click on the all caps button here and it'll do that. Uh, and you know, just centering the text. But then obviously if you want this to go lower, you can manipulate the X and Y axis here. I hope I don't lose you, but if I just click and drag this right side number, you can see how the text goes down a little bit, which is super nice, which is kind of where I would like it. So that's cool. And then uh, maybe you wanted to add a box around your text. There's a lot of these appearance features you can um, mess with. So if I hit background and I actually make it black, and I increase the opacity of it, so it just, you know, it's not see-through, and then I increase the size of it, like so, you could see how, like, it's, now it's super legible, and you can even add a curve to the edges, which is another uh, cool thing that I like that they've included recently. So, all things considered, now I have this, like, nice, neat, you know, text on screen, and I could actually add a transition to make it come in. So if I go to Effects, I can go to the video, transitions, and then just something that's kind of like basic, you know, that Premiere has, and you could download special effects from the internet, which I would encourage you to, 
invest in because it makes things easy and super professional. And so about but you could see how it, it moved in the text by itself from the left to right, and, it gives it and then it moved it out to the right side. So that's, that's one way you could have it come in. You could use something like a crossfade. So if I just went cross dissolve, sorry, cross dissolve, and drag that to the edge. And so I'm clicking on, make sure, make sure you click on the icon of the, the, the uh, effect and that you drag it to the, the end of the clip and you would see it kind of like show you that it's about to be dropped and then you let go. So, so now we have a little bit of like a fade in, which could be super nice if that's something you're going for. But what if you had like a motion text? If you were to go online and search maybe in Google, Adobe Premiere Pro title templates, it'll show you a plethora of uh, templates that you can actually invest in and you can import that into the project and make it super easy to have professional looking titles. And so let me show you, I'm gonna click on essential graphics and then go to browse. And Adobe has some like, you know, uh, default ones that come with kind of your Premiere Pro, you know, program. But you know, you could like this one I have downloaded from uh, the internet. And once I drag it on the screen, you can see, look, watch what it does. Super professional. And wherever I end the clip, it'll create the, the motion for it to leave the frame, which is, that's so sweet, right? So just search Premiere Pro title templates. And when you download them into your download folder or somewhere safe, you would then go to the bottom right of this panel and this is how you would import it from the bottom right. So these are all my titles that I have imported into the project, but it's so easy to manipulate now that I have this because now I can just put 36 to the, and then maybe just like camera, just for the sake of speed, obviously. Uh, we're going to shorten that, boom. And then maybe I'll add a, a little bit of effect to crop that, I don't like how the line's right there. So I'm just gonna add a crop to it, go to my effect controls, and from the top, kinda like cut it. You need to cut it, all right. And then if you wanna bring it down, you can drag that down a little bit further. Let me cut off more of the top. And so literally, like super cool uh, setup when it comes to being able to add a motion title to your video. Never before has it been this easy to do something like that. And so I appreciate Adobe Premiere Pro for leveling up and doing that because typically you'd have to open up another program, Adobe After Effects, do stuff, import it, and it was crazy. But that's how you add motion titles or titles to your video. If you're still with me up to this point, number one, I just wanna say thank you for hanging out with me. And the second is if you've gotten any value and you haven't hit that like button, could you do so please? As well as, hitting that save button for this video so that you can reference it in the future. But now it's time to export this video. And don't, I know this may seem like it'd be the end of this tutorial, but I'm gonna show you how to edit vertical video right after this, so don't leave. But we're gonna export this video. We've, we've done everything right. Our, our editing workflow is amazing, okay? And now we're going to export our video. And so the first thing you're gonna wanna do is bring your playhead all the way to the beginning of your project. And so, we wanna mark I, we're gonna hit uh, the I button to mark in. Now, if your video fi you know, if your video project starts like over here, I would encourage you to butt it up against the timeline because this is just best practice. So we're gonna move this all the way back, hit I. I'm gonna zoom out, go to the end of the project and I'm holding down shift to get to this to lock right there. And I'm gonna hit left once and then hit the letter O to mark out. And now we are ready to export this video. And so I'm gonna to go to the export dialog and the first thing I want you to do is number one, title your video correctly. So we're gonna call it YouTube Studio Setup. And I like to put one because this is the first render. A lot of times there's there might be mistakes and somebody might catch it. So I'll make that two when I make that, that fix. And then I wanna make sure it goes into the folder that you created earlier. So we're gonna make everything clean. It's gonna go into our folder. Just wanna make sure that's the case. So we're gonna hit save. And then as far as the preset goes, if you made a 4K video and you shot in 4K, you edited in 4K, then you're gonna hit high quality 4K, okay? If you made a 1080 video and you edited in 1080, you're gonna select high quality 1080. Omar, what about people who say, make a 1080 video and export in 4K? That doesn't make any sense. It makes no sense to like make a 1080 video and then export 4K. So 
I'm sorry, I'm, I'm biased on that, but I'm gonna hit 4K because this is a 4K video. And then the only other thing, if you have a Windows, you can hit export and you're ready to go. If you have a Mac, right now, for some reason, Premiere Pro has weird color manipulation. So when you export this, it won't look exactly what you see on screen here. It's gonna be a little bit more washed out, a little bit more brighter. So I would encourage you to download the QT Gamma Compensation LUT. Whoa, that's a lot. It's a correctional LUT that you just apply at this point in your edit and at this point in your editing process so that it can make sure the colors stay true. And so uh, in order to add that, we're gonna hit effects and I'll post a link to it down in the description below. I'm gonna hit Lumetri look slash LUT and then I'm gonna hit select and then I'm gonna go to my de uh, documents, which I, is where I have it saved. Have it saved in my, I have it saved in my Premiere Pro right here, Q2, QT Gamma Compensation LUT. So now that's going to fix the video. As you can see, it got a little bit darker because it's compensating. And then I'm gonna export it. And this is only if you have a Mac and you're using Premiere. And so that's how you export the video and maintain the best quality throughout the entire process. Now let's get into editing a social clip for YouTube Shorts, Reels, or TikTok. So here we are back in Premiere Pro, and as you can see in my bin, I have a lot of vertical videos that I shot, and newer cameras actually rotate your videos for you, which makes it super easy to edit, and I'm grateful for that. But if you have an older camera and you're filming vertical video, uh, really all you'll have to do is start a sequence and adjust the sequence setting. So let's just say you're gonna go right click here, we're gonna go new item, sequence, and then you're gonna scroll down to digital SLR. You're gonna select 1080p because you don't wanna upload 4K vertical videos because it doesn't really support it, at least at the time of shooting this video. Then I'm gonna select, you know, if you are if you shot in 24 frames or 30 frames, but I'm gonna select 24 because that's what I usually do. And then I'm going to then swap the frame size. So I'm gonna put 1080 over here and I'm gonna put 1920 over here. And then you can actually save this as a preset. I would if I were you, so you don't have to do this uh, every time. Save it as a preset, but if I hit okay, as you can see, I now have a timeline that has a vertical you know, video clip in it. But because my Sony camera already rotated the actual video itself, uh, literally, I can just you know double click on the video, mark the in and out, as you can see I did, and just literally drag it onto my timeline and now I'm met with my vertical video. But here's what's so cool about workspaces and in Premiere Pro, uh, we're gonna change this workspace. They actually have a vertical video workspace. So we're gonna go to Window, Workspaces, and we're gonna go to Vertical. And then it like is so much better because it fills the frame. And so because we made all these systems, I can like go really fast through this. The first thing I'm gonna do is uh, grade this. So I'm gonna go to Lumetri Color, and I'm gonna make sure that I'm clicked on the effect controls over here. And then I'm gonna make the tweak to this clip because I feel like it was a little bit dark and a little bit warm to begin with. And then maybe crush some of the blacks and then maybe add a little bit of sharpness and kind of just call it good right there. Looks pretty good. And then with the audio, I'm just gonna go into my effects, which it's over here. So maybe we can drag that over here, which is fine. We're gonna type in juice. Audio juice think, because we created that together. Make it your goal to help and serve people in your community. Sweet, so uh, I'm just gonna up the gain just a little bit, maybe five. Content. So just create content. Oh. So I love it. Now I wanna add captions. Now what's so cool about a Premiere Pro is you can add automated captions to the voice. So before you transcribe your sequence, we're gonna mark in and out for the clip you want to transcribe, just like as if we were exporting the video that I'm gonna come up here to text and then hit transcribe sequence and then transcribe in to out point only. So we're just gonna hit that. Premiere Pro is doing its thing, rendering audio data, and then we have now ourselves a transcript. So I'm going to now hit create captions and then, you know, you can do double lines. You know, I think everything the way it is is, total, is kind of fine the way it is. We're gonna hit create, and literally it's gonna create automatic captions as you would see on like, you will never lose as you can see over here. If it's your goal this year to grow on so you see it at the bottom. 
So that's amazing, but I wanna style the captions a little bit better and move them. And what's cool is you can just edit one and apply it to the whole thing. So we're gonna go to Essential Graphics, and then we're gonna go to Edit. Let's start with just like the font itself. Number one, I want everything to be uh, in, let's say Helvetica Bold, which is great. I'm gonna click on this and, and stretch it out too. So it, it I only want ever two lines, which is cool. So we got that, which is great. And then I actually want to put this uh, closer to the middle, maybe just down from the middle. So I'm just gonna use all the things that we have here. I don't want a shadow. However, I do want a background because uh, I think it's just more legible when you have this. So I think it's, and it's just cleaner. I also want things to be all caps, which is nice. And then if that's the case, we gotta make some more tweaks. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this a lot smaller just to make sure we could fit it on just two lines. Boom. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's pretty much, that's pretty much it. Maybe we can add some curvature to our box, which is cool. And then what you can do is you save this as a text style. So uh, we're gonna go track style, create style, and call it like OE Helvetica, hit okay. And so now that applied to all of the clips. Got it? Look at that. And then you can double check. If you, if you need to actually edit a word, you could do that. I mean, please do that. Don't have something wrong. Um, so make sure you just, you know, you do that by going like that. Or you can go to the text and edit it over here too. So you can do one of those two things. But if you're ready to go and this is ready to render, just like we did before, we're going to go to export. And what I like to do is I like to make it high quality 1080p, but once you select that, you wanna hit match source. And then once that, you could see it before I, before I did that, it, you know, it, would've, it would've rendered a widescreen video. So we wanna hit match source, make sure you do that. And then just like if you have a Mac, add that compensation LUT, but for the most part, you're ready to go. You can add this in a folder you want to add it to, and there you have it. You have crushing your reels, TikToks, and your YouTube Shorts, all with Adobe Premiere Pro. But thank you so much for joining me on this journey. If you stuck around, so grateful for you. Be sure to check out Epidemic Sound down in the link in the description below and use the code THINK50 at checkout to save 50% off a personal annual plan. And if you wanna check out another editing tutorial from here at Think Media, then go ahead and click or tap the screen. Can't wait to see you in a future video. Peace.